So without knowing anything about you, chances are I know what your least favorite spot in poker is. You have pocket kings, there's an ace on board, and you have to decide what to do with it. Am I right? If yes, stick around, you're in the right spot. I'm going to give you some tips for playing kings on an ace-eye board. Let's get into it. Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and without further ado, let's jump right into it and start talking about pocket kings on these ace-high boards. Whether it's on the flop or an ace that comes later, these tips are still going to apply. So let's frame this entire discussion around an example from my new advanced poker workbook. And the prompt for this hand on page 16 is this. You're playing a 5-10 cash game, you 3-bet preflop, and they call. The flop and turn both get checked through, and they bet for $80 on the river into a 250 pot. So right this moment after the $80 dollar bet there's 330 in the middle you have pocket kings on an ace five deuce ten seven board flush draw did not improve and this is the range straight out of the solver that your opponent would have in this spot so tip number one with kings in this spot is just to not panic just slow down relax kings is just another strong but not nutted part of your range in a spot like this so don't just absolutely panic and let your brain fry out because you have kings and of course another ace popped well yeah it happens sometimes so don't panic about it Again, you have strength, just not the nuts. Tip number two applies to this spot exactly when you are facing a bet somewhere along the way, and that is to not get married to your hand and just automatically call it off because you almost certainly had the best hand preflop. Yes, your kings was almost certainly the best hand pre, but there's a lot of things that happen between preflop and now, and we need to keep that in mind. We need to think logically about this spot. Again, don't panic, just think through the spot logically, especially when facing a bet. Tip number three in a spot like this is to make sure that you understand the math when it comes to hero calling. Understanding basic things like the pot odds you're getting, how much equity you likely have in terms of being able to estimate that, being able to compare your estimated equity to the pot odds to figure out if this is a plus EV call or not is going to be extremely, extremely important. So the way the exercises are laid out in this particular example is to first start by looking at calling. So again, looking at things like pot odds, estimated equity, etc. Looking at the EV of actually making the call here, then also comparing that to the EV of raising. And in this case, looking at an all-in, which is a little bit large compared to the overall pot size, but not extremely egregious. And then finally comparing all of those numbers, comparing the EV of calling, the EV of shoving, and the EV of folding, which of course is going to be zero EV. So since we're here, we might as well just work through some of these together and we'll kind of do this kind of quickly. So if you're newer to terms, you're like, I don't know what the heck pot odds are, I'll leave a bunch of links for things down in the description box below. But to do this top section, we just need a couple different tools. We can use the free pot odds calculator off my site. Again, I'll leave a link for this in the description box. So we just need a couple things for the pot odds when facing a bet, which is exactly what is happening here. Current pot size after they bet is 330. Amount to call right this moment is $80, our opponent's bet right now. And you notice we are getting 4.1 to 1, 4.1 to 1 pot odds. How much equity do we need right this moment? 20%. And how often do we expect to win when calling in this situation? Well, to do that, we can pull up Flopzilla, plug in the range that our opponent has. This is directly from the answer key. This is the board. This is our pocket kings. And against their entire range with everything included, we have 38% equity. So if that's the case, everything is looking pretty good. But of course, that's against just their betting range, not their entire range that they get to the river with. That's kind of important. But this is, again, and their betting range according to the solver. And then what is the EV of calling in this situation? But before we do this exact calculation, give this video a thumbs up if you think calling is going to be best in this situation. For this, we can use my river call versus raise spreadsheet, plug in a couple different numbers up in this top section. So current pot size, again, 330 after our opponent bets, amount to call 80, and equity when we actually call is that 38% that we just fired through. And we notice the EV is plus EV to the tune of 70 six dollars so given that we're playing 510 plus 7.6 big blinds for the call here all that looks pretty good for calling to me but if your first thought is well that's all great but i'm not going to have enough time to do this in real time i'm not going to be able to pull out a calculator you're 100 percent correct you're not pulling out a calculator at the tables in fact this is all stuff you do between sessions so that way in real time you can estimate it far better and if you can estimate a little bit better even a lot better than your opponent that is going to add up to edges in the long term so this why we do this kind of off-table exploration. The workbooks are great for this exact sort of thing, but you have to do this kind of work between sessions. Otherwise, in real time, you're just completely guessing. But if you think about it, when you're facing that bet, you're getting about four to one, which means 20% equity requirement. 
Are you good here at least 20% of the time? Well, if you think your opponent has any bluffs in them, yeah, chances are you're probably good enough for the time to justify at least calling here profitably. Now, you still want to consider raising, and that's what we're going to do now. Since this brings us to tip number four, which is to at minimum consider going for a raise. Yes, in this situation, we'd pretty much be turning kings into a bluff, but we do block some stuff, right? We block ace king, the ace on board naturally degrades some of the pocket ace from our opponent, and that's all well and good, so you should at least consider consider going for a raise and turning your hand into a bluff. Even though most players will never ever consider it, they just only throw it into a fold or call, but it's worth at least exploring the shove and let's do that real quick. So the prompt down at the bottom is now, what if you went all in and they only called you with top pair plus? So how often do they fold when you go all in and how often do you expect to win when they actually call you? So we can use the bottom portion of the, again, river call versus raise spreadsheet. We already have some of the numbers put in here. The total raise size would be to 850. We cover our opponent. It's their $80 bet plus the 770 remaining. And what is the win percentage when they call? Well, if they're calling with top pair plus, that's of course gonna make sure that we have 0% equity, so that's going to be 0, and then how often are they folding right this moment? Well, we can, can use Flopzilla for this. We can say if our opponent is continuing with top pair plus, how often is that happening? Well, that's 61%, which means they're going to be folding the other 39%. Cool, cool, cool. How often they fold? 39, and that is negative EV to the tune of 390. So not super great. And just for giggles, let's change one parameter slightly. Let's say instead of them just calling with top pair plus, they're only gonna call with two pair plus. Maybe they're just not gonna put that many chips in with just a single pair. Maybe it's only gonna be two pair plus. Well, now when we go back here and we change this over to two pair plus, that's pretty much nothing, right? They have that a whopping 99.9% .9 of the time. So if we went there and threw that in, again, this is egregious, but now all of a sudden we are super, super profitable. So you notice how changing some parameters like the assumption of what they would actually continue with can impact equity overall, not really in this situation since of course anything our opponent continues with beats us, but whether we think they're folding a ton of the time or a little bit of the time is massively going to impact the overall EV of going all in. Of course it might be a little bit tricky to make this shove here and have it look real to our opponent since how many strong hands are actually going to be checking the flop and turn through, hmm, that's certainly debatable but definitely something you want to be considering when you're thinking about turning a hand into a bluff is how often is your opponent likely going to read that as a possible strong hand and actually make the folds that you need them to make in order for your bluff to be plus EV. So let's answer the final question down below, which is would you call, fold, or shove? Well, given the original parameter with shoving, which of course got us a negative 390 EV, if folding is zero, calling is plus 76, and shoving is negative 390, of course plus 76 is best, and as such we should be calling in this situation again given the parameters and ranges and everything that we have right this moment but of course if the assumption that your opponent is actually going to fold pretty much 100 percent of the time when you bluff shove here of course shoving would be better since plus 329 is higher than zero and also plus 76 and just to give a little bit of extra context i want to go through the gto plus file this is included when you buy the advanced poker workbook all the gto plus files from the original work are included and if we fire through there's two major things in the game tree that I think are very, very interesting. First and foremost is, should hero call here? Well, based upon the way the hand is played out, again, check, check, flop, check, check, turn, hero, I'm sorry, villain bets eight on the river, or 80 in this exact situation. Notice if we look at pocket kings, all of it, 100% of it is in green, which means it's a call. So the solver definitely likes calling here with all of these hands, and will also call with a bunch of ace queen, and even pocket queens and pocket jacks are getting called a decent chunk of the time as well on this particular board again given the way it is run out according to the game tree and the second thing to really note here is actually looking at the tree and the overall flow is thinking about that check behind on the flop again a lot of players will spend a lot of effort and energy at the exact inflection point they're interested in as opposed to looking at previous decisions in a hand now you notice that if we go back to the flop after our opponent checks to us again we three bet preflop they check to us on the flop well 
one thing to note is what is Kings doing? According to the solver, Kings is going to get bet 66% of the time and checked behind the other 34% of the time. And I think that's interesting because a lot of players will just pretty much automatically check behind with Kings here, like 100% of the time. And just according to the solver, that's not actually the case on this particular board with the particular ranges. Things are a little bit different in three bet pots versus single raise pots, but this is definitely something to note and be aware of just in case you're like, oh, what is going on here and what should I be doing on previous streets and is it correct? Well, this is one of the reasons why we don't have a ton of kings on the river since when it goes check check on the flop and turn, well, there just aren't that many combinations left by the time you get to the river after you take that specific parameter set. And with all that said, hopefully these tips help you play pocket kings the next time you find yourself in such a spot where there's an ace on the board, especially if it pops on the flop, but even if it pops on a later street and you face any pressure, these tips are still going to help you figure out what the better answer is. And again, by doing a lot of this technical exploration and work off table, it's massively going to help you in real time make better decisions. And if you're interested in seeing the other side of Pocket Kings and the way that I would approach Kings on a board that does not have an ace on it, make sure to watch that video right up there. I'll leave a link for it in the description box as well. But I think you're really going to enjoy seeing how it works on the other side of the spectrum when you're actually more value as opposed to in the hero call side of things. But anyway, that's going to wrap it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. As always, good luck out there and happy grinding.